Uh, if you go to page five, the, the next page, uh, there's some, uh, there's really a good checklist there on things that you should be evaluating when you're determining the scope of your review, um, what to look at and how much of each individual item you're going to be looking at. Uh, so there's a list there. You're looking at the risk assessment, independent tests, the analysis and conclusion from previous reviews. Um, all of those things you know, should be evaluated even before you get started on your review. Uh, here's another tip, and it might be something that you want to write in the margin there. The BSA officer shouldn't be doing this if you're doing the independent review. Keep in mind, the BSA officer shouldn't be designing the scope if it's an independent review. If it's truly independent, you have a, somebody else who's coming in and, and designing their scope and looking at it from that perspective on their own. Now, if it's an internal audit, well, then the BSA officer can, you know, can design this because the BSA officer is, is managing their own program, and that's perfectly fine. Um, but if it's a true independent review, they should be, they, they can be, you can request their input but that independent party or that independent reviewer should be designing their scope uh, you know, outside of the influence of the BSA officer.